anybody who's ever taken I-75 across Georgia can back me up on this. There is a weird billboard war that you see all along the way here. On, on the one hand, you have all of these like, you know, Jesus is Lord and abortion stops a beating heart signs. But they're interspersed with all of these strip club and adult toy superstore at the next exit signs. No, I, I think the Jesus signs are probably outnumbered at this point. So I think sin is still winning. And that's nice. But I live in the southeastern part of the state where no interstate dares to tread. So when I drove north to Atlanta, I spent most of my time on the county highways where the craziest of the signs live. I'm talking handwritten signs about the dangers of the UN and is nigh shit that belongs on a cartoon sandwich board. 18 foot letters on the side of a private home that just say repent. Also, the word peanut misspelled in every way you can imagine, even if you work with Eli for a living. Now, I, I grew up down here, so I'm kind of used to it. But sometimes the signs are so fucked up, I have to stop for a picture, which was, of course, the case on this trip. Hell, not only did I stop for a picture, but I pulled into a driveway, turned around and drove back to make sure that I could get a nice unobstructed view of it. Now, this was a professionally made sign, at least in the sense that it wasn't hand drawn, but it was the kind of color scheme and font choice that are normally reserved for the don't picture in graphic design textbooks. Along the top, it reads, wake up. So, you know, it's about to get good. And in case the exclamation point wasn't emphasis enough, that part is underlined in yellow on a white background. Anyway, below that, it reads, Christians, stand up for Jesus now, which also gets an exclamation mark. And then it concludes, quote, vote straight Republican, end quote. So I snap a picture, I post it on Facebook and Twitter, and I get an amazing array of responses, including a bunch of true Scotsmen explaining to me that that's not really Christianity. Uh, my favorite was a guy who accused me of being bad at Photoshop. Like, you know, it's one thing to accuse me of lying without evidence, but at least admit that if it was a Photoshop job, I fucking nailed it, given that it's literally indistinguishable from reality. Of course, it took all of nine seconds for somebody to find another picture of the same sign from a different angle from like months ago in a newspaper or some shit. And a combination of being proven wrong and maybe realizing that admitting his side is so full of shit it's hard to believe ran him off before I could respond. But as much fun as I had with all these various responses, they didn't remotely balance out the terror I have at the sign's message. Right, like usually when we encounter entreaties to stand up for Jesus, it's going to be a euphemism for homophobia or something. And I, I guess that could have been what they were doing here. But to be honest, I doubt it. Conservative Christian advertisers on billboards around here are much more likely to use slurs than euphemisms when it comes to the anti-LGBTQ stuff. I, I mean, I, I think in this instance, we can actually take a Christian at their word. What is this sign telling me to do? Stand up for Jesus. What does that mean? As little as possible on purpose. I mean, don't get me wrong. As poisonous as their messages tend to be, you might think ambiguity could be the best possible thing to put into them, right? But when you think about how much mileage Christians have historically gotten out of imaginary enemies, you can start to see why this is so insidious. I mean, imaginary problems can't be solved, can they? There's no evidence I can show a concerned Christian that Democrats are defending Jesus from this undefined attack, nor is there any evidence I can show that Republicans aren't. There are no numbers we can compare that show how attacked Jesus is under Democratic versus Republican administrations. And at the same time, there's no compromise we can offer. Right? There's no middle ground between reality and a nonspecific paranoid fantasy. See, look, for decades, they've been able to motivate their base with hollow promises to outlaw abortion. But at this point, that issue motivates about as many people to vote against them as to vote for them. And they're on the verge of accidentally accomplishing it anyway. They need a new boogeyman, and preferably, they need one that can never be defeated. We've watched for years as they've concocted this Frankensteinian phobia that sews together fears of society progressing faster than them, bigotry against the LGBTQ community, loss of unearned societal privilege, and panic about plain red Starbucks cups as an attack against Christianity itself. Never mind that the perpetrators are majority Christian. Right. It's not their outmoded worldview that's under attack. It's not their narrow definition of acceptable romantic relationships. It's not their decreasing relevance to the larger social conversation. It's their very religion under attack by the forces of darkness themselves via the Democratic Party. And look, this shitty canvas billboard cover wasn't made by 
you know, the big movers and shakers of the GOP. It wasn't affiliated with the One America Network. Some jackass Fox News addict dipped into his retirement to finance this thing. He's been hearing this refrain of an attack on Christian values for so long that he believes it completely, even if he can't define it. He's all in. And what's more, he's almost certainly going to remain all in until the day he dies because there is no victory condition for an imaginary problem. 